Hello everybody. It has been raining a lot here in early and mid-February. Got water all over the place. Makes it hard to do stuff outside without making it muddy. But we're hanging in there. Spring is around the corner. We're gonna go collect fertilized eggs. We're on day five of collecting fertilized eggs from Gandalf and the girls. So we'll head over there first. So we've got six girls in here, and so far we've been averaging more than four eggs a day out of this grouping where they should be fertilized. And Arya's gonna come check it out right now. James, are you playing catch a chicken? I'm playing catch a duck. Here comes Arya. Whoa, five more eggs. All right. So that puts our total at 24 potentially fertilized eggs saved so far. We have the capacity in our incubator for 41 eggs. And I think over the 10 days of collecting the eggs, we're gonna exceed 41. And that will let us be a little picky. Like that, that skinniest egg in there, in our experience and reading online, <laughs> misshapen eggs like skinny eggs, small eggs are less likely to hatch out a chick so we'll probably end up being picky and discarding the skinniest smallest eggs to pick our best 41. <laughs> Alright that's those chickens taken care of and quick I'll take you over to the mushroom area and give you an update on them. Those huge logs down there have been inoculated, but I'll take you for a closer look. So our friend Stephen had come over and knocked down a couple of cottonwood trees, one of them being a really huge one, and that's what you see here. And I'd contacted the mushroom supply company that we'd ordered from and asked if you can do these huge logs, because their recommendation is logs four to eight inches in diameter. And I asked if they do anything with huge logs. And they told me about the wedge method, where you take your chainsaw and cut out a wedge and then put some inoculant in there. And then I use screws or big nails to spike the wedges back in place. So these big logs you see are all inoculated by the wedge method. And they, they use duct tape to put the wedges back on and I just could not get myself to have a bunch of duct tape down here. I feel like that would look so dumb. So I, uh, I spiked them in place and then I put some moss and hopefully we're wet enough down here that that's good enough. So all these big logs are inoculated with oyster mushrooms. Golden oyster on this side and blue oyster over here. This huge log is blue oyster. And then these I did with the normal um, plug. You can see all the little foam stoppers where I did them with that gun. So that's what's going on with these big mushroom logs. And then walking along the creek on our mushroom video, I stacked up that stuff back there. And I finished up with this stuff here, which is a combination of shiitake and oyster. So I've, I've wrapped up all of the mushroom project because I used up all our supplies. And so now it's just a waiting game and I'll do some again next year. I learned a lot and uh, one of the things I learned was that there's an optimal time to be cutting down the trees that you're going to use. The um, Field and Forest has a chart and basically I think it's mid to late fall when about 30% of the trees have lost their leaves or trees have lost 30% of their leaves for something to do with plant biology the most sugar is stored in the wood of the tree at that point and so if you can plan ahead and cut your logs then and then store them up off the ground and inoculate them that winter or early spring that can be your best bet so we can plan ahead for next year on 
trees we would want to take down. And here's Tina with a baby. With a baby. Very bright out here for her. <laughs> yeah, we haven't been getting much sun, but here it is now. Okay. How's this baby doing? She's good. She's such a good girl. Tina's a good mama. <laughs> you starting to smile? Hi. Tina is with this baby 24-7. <laughs> yeah, it is 24-7, but I'm enjoying it so much. Tina, Tina does something called um, elimination communication, which is basically like <laughs> infant potty training. But basically Tina can tell or suspect when the baby needs to go poop or something. And just now I saw Tina holding the baby over the toilet and got a little bit in there. <laughs> so. It makes cleaning up a lot easier than... Yeah, smearing up. it all over her in a diaper is... <laughs> yeah. Yep. So it's not like... It's not like we don't go through a bunch of diapers, but it's nice. I remember you did it with Arya and James, and the big yep. thing I remember taking away from it was the transition to potty training seemed a lot easier because yeah, lot the kids weren't seamless. afraid of the toilet because since they were a tiny baby, they'd been held over it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so there wasn't that transition where all of a sudden you introduce them to a toilet and it's scary and they never did it, so. Yeah. So good job, Super Mama Tina. Woo -woo. And good job, baby. Good job, baby. <laughs> I, baby really likes Tina, but if I get too close and talk to her, or heaven forbid, try to sing to her with my... <laughs> see? she does, If I get too close, she gets grouchy. <laughs> Especially if I try to sing. Huh, baby? I love you, baby. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry for talking to you, baby. All right. Uh, we already took care of those chickens, sweetie, and now we can I'll check on the other. bunny and do the other chickens. Great. There's a good bunny. New grass for the bunny. Okay, how's that look? Great. We're getting pretty excited about this green grass growing behind us. Oh, it's looking so good. This is our goal for so many of the places where we either bring the animals or mow or both. You know, that was... I can't, we'd have to look at old videos. That was mostly blackberry back there. Yeah. In a lot of spots and it's green grass now. Especially so. on the damn wall. You cursing? <laughs> <laughs> so lots of grass, lots of grass. Everyone gives me a hard time when they hear how, many, how much I say the damn wall. <laughs> oh baby. Too much sunshine for baby. All right, beautiful. To the other chickens. This field where we've got the chickens and the goats is so soggy and I've kind of got long-term ideas for maybe doing some excavation work to drain more and more of this water to the pond but we should be patient with it but you can see like where I dug a drainage ditch off of the road in front of the old house there lots of water just sitting so I'm thinking that if I continued pulling and excavating towards the pond maybe we can stop this field from being so soggy in the winter where i'm standing now is the next place we're going to move the chickens i'll rotate you and look the pond is over there it gets soggier as you get closer to the pond so i'm envisioning kind of scooping that out and heading that way maybe even extend the pond this way some if it really wants to be wet and soggy that far up maybe we should make the pond a little longer we'll see Part of me wants to try to do it myself with our little excavator, but I also would consider contacting an excavation expert that has done lots of ponds and really talk to them, get advice on what they would do. So, we'll see. We were thinking really hard about just having the pink house completely demolished and then building a replacement home over the top of it. And what we're thinking is building a nice looking barn structure that we would use as half house, half shop, garage type of space. We haven't made any firm commitments, but we're thinking hard about it. I've contacted some builders. I've talked to Tina's brother, Gare. 
our family construction expert about it and he's actually coming to visit in a few days and we'll talk a lot about that potential project and a yurt deck and maybe others but the yurt deck and building some kind of barn home are things I'm thinking hard about although the barn home will be definitely be a multi-year project where I think if we hired out work what we would hire is somebody to do some combination of demolish this house and build the the roofed frame of a barn and then hopefully Gare and I and other help would finish it out as the home and garage so that's that's a consideration it's still it's still a mess back here so um, clean up here is definitely warranted but originally we did not think about living in exactly this spot but as we've been patient and gotten to know the property and cleared it out around it it's actually a really nice spot as we get things cleaned up we realize that kind of our front porch of this would look down at the pond we can get this area into a nice lawn field kind of as as we clean this place up we like this spot more and more because we had considered maybe trying to live or put a home further back on the property but that would be you know the expense of moving power and water that direction driving that much further every time you leave and come back not having a visual on your entrance and things coming and going so yeah something we're thinking about we'll keep you updated as we make decisions and start on that kind of project so one major update with the goats we sold mr bilbo our breeder boy we were thinking hard about what our plan was because if you leave your buck and your does together you can end up with babies kind of any time I, I guess naturally they would tend to focus on having getting pregnant in the fall and having the babies in the spring but if you leave them together it could happen at other times and the timing could end up such that you know you have baby goats in the summer or fall they don't have much time to gain weight before that first winter and that might not go well in a situation like ours where we're we're not keeping them in a barn mm -hmm. so we were thinking about our options and i'd taken a couple pictures of bilbo and put him on craigslist just as kind of a let's see if something happens and it just so happened that someone wanted him and needed him the same day yeah so we sold him really fast that but it's pretty exciting he went to have 18 does to live with and the people seemed really nice so mm -hmm. bill was going to a better place but um but it was sad that i carried him over to their trailer and the second i put him in and he was by himself he started crying oh. he was whining oh. and it, I, it was surprised us olaf got really upset and was confused why is Bilbo sad and Olaf when they left Olaf actually followed him down the driveway and I had to go get him and stop him and hold him from following that trailer all the way out to the road and beyond he was really concerned about Bilbo when Bilbo was crying <laughs> but so now we've just got our our five girls and one weather and we'll see if we have some babies I checked the date based on when we introduced Bilbo the soonest we could be having babies is April 28th so we could have babies starting April 28th and it, we owned Bilbo you know he was in here with the girls um, all of December January and part of February so in theory anywhere from April 28th to end of June or something it's yeah. possible we could be having babies so we'll see, we'll see. hopefully we don't have babies that late um, from doing some reading goats would gain most of their weight in the spring so it would be great to get them born and gain some good weight in the spring so we'll see how that goes only other thing to note is back here in the really thick blackberry we've gone in with the loppers and machete and I've also taken the weed whacker and kind of cut paths back there because it gives the goats lanes to eat more blackberry they can only 
before once blackberries so tall they can't they're not just a bulldozer that can just blast through it you know these poor goats you can tell sometimes they get a little battle scarred you'll see a bleeding ear or something where they've been pushing into blackberry to eat and scratch themselves and stuff so we find ways to help them by cutting into it so that they'll eat more of it and um, and I think in the next day or two I might go weed whack some more but that's been working really well for us the girls are doing good. Oh, sweetheart. Anything else about the goats? I feel like, oh, I ordered some more goat fencing so that we could make it even longer if we wanted to. This spot, the one thing I'm feeling a little bit bad about is there isn't a great dry area for the dogs to relax. I can tell this spiky, swampy grass, the, the dogs don't like walking on it. So it'd be nice to move them We'll be moving them up towards those woods back there and hopefully their next paddock gets the rest of the blackberry on that hill and gets them some space in those woods because I think especially the dogs will like to shelter back under the trees on nice, nicer ground. So that's what's going on with the goaty goats. Mm -hmm. Jack the duck, we've still seen him. Sometimes he flies to hang out with the chickens and then flies back. Sometimes he just walks around on this wet field. Olaf seems to be leaving him alone. Olaf um, did really well. So that's been good. Oh, bud. Oh, bud. Do you still miss Bilbo or did you forget? Olaf, the, the Olaf really, one of the things he his brain is good at is knowing when somebody left. So like if I leave or Tina leaves, you'll often see him sitting and looking down the driveway waiting for them to come back. <laughs> And when Bilbo, when Bilbo left, I think I took a short clip of it. He was sitting there looking down the driveway the rest of that afternoon and evening when Bilbo left. He was waiting for Bilbo to come back. I don't think Bilbo's coming back, bud. That's okay. <laughs> I've been doing some firewood cutting and splitting, getting ready for next year. Our heating with wood was a success, although we, we had some, or I had some, newbie wood heating issues um, a big one was it got to a point a few weeks ago where the fireplace or the wood stove was not drafting well and when I would try to get the fire going and every time I'd open the side door smoke would come out of the side door into the yurt and I realized there was some kind of problem I cleaned out the stove I opened the bottom of the chimney from the outside and then the, the last spot and the main problem area ended up being the chimney cap. I don't know how well the camera will see it from way over here, but the, um, the chimney cap has a, a mesh so that smoke can come out, but you can't have like birds fly in and nest in it. But the um, creosote and ash and stuff had built up and basically sealed the chimney cap. So our kind friends let us borrow that big ladder that I'd originally used to assemble the chimney and I went and took the chimney cap off, cleaned it up, and I actually snipped some bigger holes in that mesh to try to avoid that problem again. I think one of the reasons we, well, there's a few reasons we had that problem. I'm burning wood that hasn't been dried long enough because we, we cut wood to clear the area for the yurt and I wanted to use our own wood rather than buy wood. So we're, we burned wood that wasn't dried completely, which means it'll burn a little smokier and a little cooler and can cause more buildup. And I think I also wasn't running the stove correctly. I learned a lot about how to run the stove. And I think I was lighting fires before bedtime and then tamping them down at night and running them too cold or the fire too cool through the night and it would produce more smoke and more buildup. So I've learned a lot about that. With our winter temperatures not being extremely cold, it's tough. There's sometimes if I light too hot of a fire at night, it can be uncomfortable, uncomfortably warm at bedtime. <laughs> and then the trade-off is I don't light a fire at all at bedtime and it's pretty cold in the morning when we wake up. So it's a balance that we're figuring out. Mm -hmm. But I definitely learned that, you know, just run a smaller hot fire rather than really tamping down a smoldering fire that causes buildup in the chimney. It's a nice evening fire that keeps us warm while we're awake and yep. hanging out and and then it dies off before we go to bed so we yep. can sleep with our blankets on. So we're getting that figured out. I did a little 
excavation work back here, our, our toilet system, the, the worm compost septic system is here. And I used some, some T-post and cinder blocks to support the back and the sides of it. And then I've backfilled it recently. The, I, it should have been done earlier, like fully enclosing this system because the worms become basically inactive below 50 degrees. And so there hasn't been a lot of worm activity in our compost system this winter, which means the waste is building up a little bit. It's not overflowing or anything, but it would be better if the worms had been more active through the winter. But as the spring temperatures build up, then it'll perform a lot better. But what I've got set up here is I set up a second tank, which gives us the option of either occasionally routing the sewer line from the yurt to one or the other it gives us that option you know if if we need to do some kind of maintenance on the one or it gives us the option of building uh, an outdoor bathroom near this area and putting into that one or even if we set up some some kind of rv parking spot back here it could drain into that one i just figured if i was going to go through all the effort of making this area and the drain field and all of that and i had the spare ibc tote it makes sense to make a double system. So that little wood frame there, I'll build a, a real roof for it and then enclose it, do some insulating and get it all tidied up. Uh, a big thing, oh, I mentioned temperature for the worms, but another thing is making it completely dark for them. Worms instinctively retreat from light. So that tote, anywhere that sunlight is getting through the worms are less likely to come and do their work so more to come on that eventually i'll do a, a full video on that system and how it's going one exciting thing is that i ordered starlink internet that's internet in a beta testing program by the company spacex they've been launching lots of satellites in the northern hemisphere to provide good quality, very high speed internet to rural people. And that's going to be great for us. We run our, we run Wi-Fi hotspots off of our phones for our internet, which works, but is pretty slow. So very high speed internet will be awesome. I'll, I'll let you all know when I have Starlink internet. Uh, I think I got an email that it's four to six weeks out, something like that. So I think it'll be a little while, but I'm excited to jump into that. Got in and some heavy rain arrived. What else has been going on? Oh, I can show you. I built a steam trap in the shower because our, our issue was the, the shower. You know, we put that vent in, but steam could just go straight up here and up the yurt. So the vent wasn't capturing much of the steam. So I built this plastic, I went and bought plastic from a plastic supply place and built something that fully covers the top and wraps around. And I put a, a chamber around the vent and now it draws all the steam through. I'm really happy with how it's working. Basically, there's places where air gets through like right here and at the bottom, but it's small enough areas that all the, all the steam draws that direction. We don't leak any of it. And I know this looks ugly because it's really hard to caulk and glue this stuff, but I'm going to get some trim and trim it up to try to make it look a little better. But the good news is it completely traps all the steam. That's what's going on. Quick update. Yeah. Got the fire going. Yeah. Got a happy baby. Yeah. Ari and James are all fired up and acting yeah. like <laughs> acting like goofballs. <laughs> um, we just finished reading Red Wall, books I read way when I was a kid. Arya, what did you think of Red Wall? I don't think James followed a lot of it, but he liked some of the funny voices and stuff. How about? It's a good story. I can yeah. read it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Alright, now we're going to find out if we won or lost if our guess matches. I'm so scared. Oh, no! We lost. It said Charles. Charles. Oh, man. Where is he? The fox got away with it and stole the pie. Stole our pie. Good. This is Charles. 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 It was you. Never trust a guy in a white coat. Without pants. <laughs>